This is a place where common sights are uncommon. A turtle warily watching the world, swallows swirling around their new homes, geese grazing near fresh water, even fishermen casting their lines. In fact, here, these sights are hard to believe. That's because back in 2008, the world learned the hard way about coal ash or fly ash and its hazards. A byproduct of burning coal, the wet ash had been stored for years by TVA at its Kingston steam plant, accumulating with such weight and mass that it finally breached an earthen dike. Spilling onto the surrounding countryside, it smothered everything in its path. Early on, there was lots of predictions of gloom and doom, that the system was going to collapse, uh, there would be no more fishing on Watts Bar. I mean, the, it, it didn't look good. That is an understatement. In fact, no one knew how serious the situation really was. Coal ash with its heavy metals, including arsenic, mercury, lead, was viewed as life-threatening to humans, animals, and plants. The Emory River, clogged with debris and ash, became a central focus for cleanup crews as dredging with all its uncertainties began. Within a year of the spill, TWRA biologists help sample bass and other fish found in the river as well as mussels placed there to reveal levels of pollution. The sampling is ongoing. The easiest way to do it is just grab one of the two big front legs. I can tell you without hesitation, this is the most complicated, most video. interesting, most complex site I've ever worked on in my entire career. And it has to do with all the different types of fly ash, all the different metals. The river is very dynamic and the different times of year, um, different types of living systems. It's, it makes it an endless place to study uh, the impacts of fly ash. It's also an important place as the Emory merges nearby with the Clinch, which flows into the Tennessee, a major river system in our state and country. The ash spill created an unprecedented challenge for researchers trying to figure out the impact of three and a half million cubic yards of ash flowing into the Emory River the impact on the environment as a whole, and on the wildlife in it. Today, thanks to research by people like Ryan Otter, answers are forthcoming, and they're not all bad. One of the keys to looking at a spill site of this volume is to focus in on sensitive species. Oh, got him. Well, this is where looking at the animals really tells us the true story. Six species of fish and four species of birds were sampled by a variety of biologists, all with minimal results. But for Professor Otter and one of his students, the key animal is a small, shy spider hiding on vegetation near the water. So these are tetragnathidae spiders. So they're just called tetragnathid. Um, Long-jawed orb weavers is the common name. They're important because of what they eat. All of their nutrients, all of, including the contaminants that are in the, the sediment, gets incorporated into the bugs that live in the sediment. And so what we have here is a terrestrial spider that eats their entire diet from the river bottom. Easy to collect and abundant, the spiders might be the answer to determining the effect of the coal ash spill on the emery and its inhabitants. They have a pretty high fat content in their body, which makes them extremely good from an environmental toxicology standpoint, which is what I do, because the contaminants we're mostly interested in concentrate at high levels in fat. Ryan has been collecting the spiders for over a year. He's been surprised to find only one worry, and that in manageable amounts. Selenium seems to be the only real um, metal of concern. All the other ones seem to be mostly bound to sediments and not really available in the environment. Ryan says the metals in the water bound with another ash ingredient, carbon, making it harder for wildlife to ingest. Even so, the results will be studied for a long time. The decision was made to leave the remaining ash that we weren't able to dredge out of the river in the river and let just natural recovery come in and cover up the ash that's in there. And we're going to be monitoring that for the next, up to the next 30 years to make sure that what we've modeled and what we forecast is going to happen is actually going to happen. Today, as earth moving machines probe 70 feet deep to build a retaining wall tied into bedrock, the reclaimed spill site is quite a change from what it was. About half of the original 800 workers remain, carefully scraping and moving the remaining ash and dirt. While ash will be stored here, 
a thick plastic liner will be placed on top, followed by several other layers, including topsoil. As for the Emory River, the hope is it will clean itself with new layers of natural sediment moving in. Our sediment models predicted that within 10 to 15 years, we're going to get anywhere from a foot to five feet of clean sediment coming in. And that sediment then would cover up that ash. The destruction that once was has given way to a slow healing, much of which has been the result of people working night and day. But in the future, the healer will be in the environment itself. If you can give Mother Nature that little initial lift, she can usually, she'll take care of the rest. But by getting the material out of the watershed, out of the, the water bodies, um, yeah, she's, she's doing the rest for us and she's done quite a remarkable job. I'm Alan Griggs on Tennessee's Wild Side.